Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to the Rodinia project. What is the Rodinia project, you ask? I like to call it a cubes and buttons first person puzzle game. It released a few days ago and this is what it looks like. So this game is about cubes and buttons mostly. You pick up cubes or you actually dematerialize them and then re you rematerialize them somewhere else. And then you can use them as stepping stones to get up high or you can put them on buttons to open doors. You can also throw cubes like uh, this to open, uh, to activate buttons further away. And as I said, it opens doors and that lets you progress further and that will allow you to get to the end of the level at some point, which is over there, for example, for this level. Uh, so it's a, it's a puzzle game for the most part. Uh, it's a first person puzzle game, obviously. And I usually, or I really enjoy that genre. Unfortunately, I dislike most games in that genre. And this game is unfortunately not an exception to that. It's not a bad game, it's not terrible. But it's actually decent, it's okay, and I think some people will enjoy this. But for me, the best way to describe this game is boring. And that's for multiple reasons. First of all, the mechanics are fairly limited and boring. There's nothing interesting here. You, put, you pick up cubes, you can throw them, you put them on buttons that open doors. There's nothing besides that, there's, there's nothing else. So that's fairly limited and um, not very interesting. More importantly, the levels or the puzzles are very boring as well, mostly because they are very easy. Um, it's fairly easy to figure out what you have to do and uh, yeah, it's very straightforward usually. And I think what part of the reason is that the, as I mentioned, limited mechanics because there are only so many ways you can create a puzzle with only cubes and buttons. Like that's just not a big possibility possibility space and therefore um, you end up or you you you, have, you limited yourself with that and therefore you it's hard to come up with interesting puzzles. And therefore most of the puzzles in this game are very boring and easy or all of the ones I saw so far. So that's very unfortunate because that's usually the most important part of a puzzle game. So besides that, like on top of the puzzles being boring, the game is also slow. You move very slowly, as you can see, there's no sprint button and the levels are unnecessarily huge, or not necessarily huge, but they're bigger than they have to be for the most part. Which means that you end up in situations where you um, solve a puzzle in in only a few seconds, but in order to complete the level, you take a minute or two. Which is very frustrating to me, I really hate when games do that, and unfortunately they do that a lot. It's really hard to create good puzzle games, not everyone is a port punky. Um, so yeah, I, I, I guess I get that. I'm really bad at creating puzzles myself. But I really appreciate if people manage to create good ones and unfortunately this game doesn't do that so that's very sad but not, not, not a big surprise to be honest. So besides the game being boring uh, or having boring levels and slow movement, the rest of the game is very boring as well. The aesthetics are very boring, as you can see. Everything is white and gray. It's it's nothing interesting going on here. Um, the music, while relaxing and yeah, it, it's it's a good sound, but it's only this the whole time. It's the same music over and over again. It's the same like only mostly <laughs> almost only one tone. It's more than one, but anyway, it feels like it's only one, and it's it's the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. It's it's very boring again and. Did I go into the wrong level? I might have. Let's just go to a further one. I'm replaying levels here. I, I solved already um, for recording purposes. Um, so, yeah, the music, the, the aesthetics, very boring as well. There is no story going on or anything besides the puzzles, which is okay usually. I, I prefer my puzzles, or not necessarily prefer, but I'm completely okay with a puzzle game that is without any story or anything um, besides that, as long as the puzzles are good or the mechanics are interesting. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, this is not the case here and therefore this is a little lacking. Also, because um, because the, pu the, the puzzles uh, or the mechanics are very limited, the game at some point um, changes or transforms from a pure logic puzzle game to a game that requires more exploration so you have to find the cubes first before you use them or even um, uh, requires precise execution like precise jumps or precise throws like this for example if I screwed that up it's not hard like it's not necessarily a hard platform or anything but there are elements of precision in this game 
And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I prefer my puzzle games usually to be clean, logical puzzle games. Not necessarily, like if the mechanics um, are really interesting or fun to play with, like say in Portal for example, then I like a good mix of logic puzzles and execution. But for this game the execution is very, very boring and very slow as mentioned earlier, and therefore that doesn't actually help whatsoever. Uh, quite the opposite, it makes it worse. So these red barriers, they are actually a, an additional mechanic. Um, they destroy cubes, not when the cube, stu cube touches it, but when I go through them while I hold the cube, as you can see here. So, um, well, the, when the cube touches it, they, it is destroyed as well, but as long as it is dematerialized in my, well, hands, whatever, then it will not be destroyed. God damn it! <laughs> This is actually, I'm, I'm impressed by this, kind of, <laughs> a little bit. This is a good way of uh, explaining that mechanic to the player, um, to just show them how the cube falls into that thing, so that's good. There was one other highlight in the game in the first level, I found a secret. It was not hard to find, but uh, it was a nice surprise to find one, and I hope to find more. So far I'm out of luck, I'm not sure if I'm just bad or if there are not too many secrets. So, um, yeah nothing there to make the game more fun, unfortunately. So here's one of the examples where the game requires some precision. Again, not terribly hard, but you have to get through these um, doors or whatever without touching them, or you will lose the cube. Also, this level had one more really hard precision throw in it, uh, I will show you in a moment, which actually got patched out, I think. Uh, which is good, because it was very, very frustrating when I first played it, so, um, yeah, that's that's a good thing, wait, uh, oh yeah, right, uh, we throw this over here, and then we can pick up the cube through the window here, and throw it over there as well, and there we go. Also, the game tends to softlock, um, like, it's fairly easy to softlock yourself in certain levels, and the problem is, the game never tells you how to restart a level. It's very easy, you just press R, but the game never tells you. It doesn't show you any controls whatsoever, so that's a little infuriating. Um, I, luckily, I never got stuck, but yeah. So uh, yesterday, when I played this, there was a barrier here, and you had to throw the cube over the barrier while moving on a platform. That was quite tricky to do, and it was not fun, by the way. It was just frustrating, so I'm glad they patched that out, but yeah. Um, also, I had one more really, really annoying thing happening to me um, that was also patched out, however. Uh, I delete deleted my save file, I actually solved this level already, and uh, I think I solved the first one of the next world as well. And uh, I deleted my save file by pressing the new game button, and it did not uh, ask a second time or warn me that that would say erase my save file. I just wanted to see if there are multiple save slots, there aren't, and it just erased my save completely. <laughs> Luckily that got pitched in, patched in now, so if you press the new game button now, it will ask if you want to delete everything. As you can see here, I'm progressing to the second world, just to demonstrate how slow this game can be, because when you traverse between worlds, you have to take those slow elevators, and when they are on the, their way up, you have to wait for them to come down first again. And uh, then you have to, to traverse those long corridor, this long corridor here, then go all the way around here, without a sprint button, keep that in mind, and move, and move, and move, and move, until you reach this door, and then you are here. And again, this is a huge area, way bigger than it has to be, and it's just not useful, like there's no reason for it to be that big. It's just, there's no point. <laughs> and if you come here early, you will realize, oh, this is not unlocked yet, I have to walk all the way back. Well, you actually don't. Uh, you can use the reset button, but the game never tells you to do that, so I was lucky to find that out. <laughs> but yeah, also there are those drones, which just float around. Um, they don't do anything. Besides, one of them blocked me earlier, so it was not one of those doorways, and I couldn't get past it. I had to step back, wait 30 seconds until it decided to move again, so I could actually get to, to the next level. That was really annoying. And there are a lot of those things in this game. The game is just wasting your time left and right. So we can press the R, the R button to get back here and get back to the levels. Um, so over here, as you can see. As I said, I solved the first world already and the first level of the second world as well, I think. And then I erased my save file. But I don't really want to play more because, as I said, so far the levels are very boring to me and everything else is very boring as well and it wastes a lot of time. Like. If those levels, if I could solve these levels in actually 20 seconds each and could just skip to the next level, that would be okay. But I can't. It takes a long time. 
and that's just annoying. And that would be okay if in the downtime there would be something interesting, if there would be a story or something interesting to look at or something that gives me a reason to have those downtimes, those long walks between levels or even in the levels. If there would be a reason to have them in there, that would be okay, but there isn't. There is just nothing besides the puzzles, and as I said earlier, that would be okay if the puzzles would be good and the downtimes would not be there, but that's unfortunately not the case. So let's take a look at the option menu, which is, well, pretty good for the most part. Has some flaws, however. First flaw, the field of view slider does not save. When you exit the game, it resets, for some reason. The rest of the graphic options seem to be saved when you exit the game, but the field of view slider resets, for whatever reason. But it's good that we have one. The rest of the options are good as well. Resolution options, no borderless window, but, well, yeah, that's pretty common. Um, resync slider, limit frame rate button, and, you, and a slider, so you can limit it to whatever you else you want, or no limit at all. Different anti-aliasing options, um, multiple other graphical options here. Three audio sliders, master music and effects, so that's really cool as well. Um, not really necessary because the sound of the, in the game is not really that important, but still, it's good to have them. And a few options. Oh, that got improved since the last patch as well. Seems like the dev is actually busy fixing the game or improving the game, which is good, which is good, but it's not enough to keep me playing, unfortunately. So, first of all, you can activate this button, which will change the reset button from holding to just pressing it once. You can turn off the head bob, which I really appreciate because I hate the head bob. Uh, you can turn off the camera sway if, you're not, if you are annoyed by that. You can invert your y-axis if you're one of those people. And now you can also change the mouse sensitivity and the idle crosshair opacity. So that's that's really cool. That's a good of good uh, a lot of good options. One big thing missing here: rebindable keys. The game doesn't have a lot of keys, just W, S, D, R, and the two mouse buttons. But still, a it would be nice to look up those keys, especially the R key, because it's never explained. B it would be nice to be able to rebind them because. Some people just prefer playing with different keys. Some people prefer to play QWSD instead of, instead of AWSD. Some people have different keyboard layouts and whatnot. There are multiple reasons why people would um, change their layouts. Some people would prefer playing with the arrow keys. What I don't know. It's just good to have rebindable keys. And it's good to tell people about the keys in the game. As I said, the game never mentions that there is a reset button. Which is pretty infuriating because there's actually no way of leaving a level. You cannot leave a level, you can only exit the game, which means you have to reboot it, and then you will be back at the hub. But um, in the level, there's no way of getting out besides actually solving it, which is really dumb. But yeah, that's that's all small nitpicks. That would all be things I could overlook if the game or if the puzzles would actually engage in me, but unfortunately they don't, and the rest of the game doesn't either. So. This is definitely not my kind of game, I'm sorry, but I, I expected this, to be honest. As I said earlier, I like this genre, but I dislike most of the games in the genre, so uh, that's just a sad reality I have to live with, I guess. If you are interested in a fairly easy and straightforward and easy to get into um, first-person puzzle game, and you're not too worried about uh, playing slow and taking your time and, and uh, well, wasting some time, quote-unquote, then I guess it's still worth to check this out. Like, it's a pretty good introduction to first-person puzzle games because it's very easy and, and no, nothing crazy going on, and uh, so that's good. I, I would still recommend Portal 1 over this, I guess, but, I mean, that's a high bar to reach. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's called the Rodinia Project. Link is in the description below. I'm TH Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun and see you next time.